The rapid post-war economic recovery led to a coal shortage, which was the primary energy resource at the time. To meet the growing transportation demand, JNR focused on electricity generated by hydropower and quickly electrified major main lines. Express trains were reintroduced on the Takedo and Sanayo lines, and many freight trains hauling over 1,000 tons were operated. The locomotives used were electric locomotives designed before the war, and although the material conditions improved post-war, the basic structure remained old. Electric locomotives had outputs well over 2,000 horsepower, and even pre-war designs could somehow cope. However, the increase in train services led to insufficient track capacity, necessitating longer and faster formations to alleviate this issue, pushing the limits. At that time, lightweight high-power motors were not yet available, and locomotives with six driving axles had limitations in power improvement. Enter the EH-10 electric locomotive, an eight-driving axle engine with no leading wheels, known as the etch tow. It became a symbol of post-war high-performance locomotive design. Capable of hauling 1,200 tons on a 10-per-mile incline, which was challenging for the EF-15, it was highly anticipated as a potential high-speed locomotive for passenger trains. However, in the passenger domain, it lost out to EMUs and stepped back, but it continued to serve as the largest and most powerful freight locomotive for JNR. Rapid advancements in electrical technology after the war led to the development of even higher performance. High-power motors were developed, and locomotives like the EF-60, with six driving axles, achieved almost the same performance. These were designed for cooperative operation of both passenger and freight services, breaking the traditional division of roles. Although the etch tow was a new design post-war, its maximum speed was 85 km per hour, making it unsuitable for premium passenger trains. Despite this, its high output at will ram and tractive effort maintained its position as a heavyweight freight hauler even after the introduction of new high-performance electric locomotives. However, the wave of speed improvements also reached freight transport, though the express freight trains like the Takara Container Express were dominated by the etch tow, Increased demands for higher speeds soon surpassed the 85 km per hour capability of the etch tow, displacing it from its lead role. Even though its rank decreased, there were still express freight trains with a maximum speed of 85 km per hour. As the electrification of the Sanayo main line extended westward, the etch tow's range of activity also expanded westward. By 1960, electrification reached Kurashiki, extending its operational area to Okayama, where it continued to haul long freight trains. During the boom of AC electrification, it was whispered that the area west of Kurashiki would be electrified with AC, but eventually, DC electrification progressed to Hiroshima within two years. The rapid pace of electrification outstripped the production of electric locomotives, making it impossible for the EF-15 and EF-58 to retire from their main roles. On the steep grades between Sino and Hakihomatsu, there was a significant shortage of helper electric locomotives, requiring even express and limited express EMUs to need helpers. The EF-15, supported by surplus D-52 locomotives, struggled, and even the EF-58 relied on D-52S to haul sleeper expresses. The heavy smoke emitted at low speeds by the D-52 contaminated electrical equipment, such as the overhead wires, adversely affecting insulation. As a result, the EF-59 was hurriedly prepared, achieving a smokeless operation in the same section. Electrification continued to extend westward, ultimately connecting to Shimonoseki while remaining under DC electrification. Although the Takedo main line was superior, the Sanayo main line was also active in both passenger and freight transport, with a demand for long, heavy trains. The Edge Tow, capable of running almost equivalently to new performance electric locomotives in ordinary freight train haulage, seemed poised to find an ideal place to thrive. However, in reality, the Edge Tow did not make regular advancements west of Okayama, 
only extending to the UNO line. The Sinohachi issue mentioned earlier was at play here. Considering curve resistance, the nearly 25 per mile incline in that section should have been manageable by the edge toe if new performance electrics could climb it with the help of EF59. Performance curves show that even when hauling 1,200 ton freight trains all consisted of two axle freight cars, both the edge tow and EF59 balanced at just over 50 km per hour in full field operation, with the current slightly below the one hour rated current. With all resistance cut out, there was no risk of burning out, and the heat generated by the motors remained within permissible limits. However, the fundamental structural difference between the two, namely whether there are six or eight motors, comes into play. The control of DC motors at that time used a method where unnecessary power was dissipated as heat through resistors. As explained in another video, to reduce the energy wasted as heat and make the resistor smaller and lighter, multiple motors were reconfigured. All six motors connected in series, three motors in series with two groups in parallel, and two motors in series with three groups in parallel. While having all motors in parallel would be ideal for adhesion performance, it wasn't possible due to the voltage limitations of the motors, so these three configurations were standard. However, the edge toe had eight motors, making it impossible to create a combination with three motors in series. It could only be configured as all motors in series, four motors in series, or two motors in series. The electricity supplied at an overhead line voltage of 1,500 volts is generally evenly distributed according to the number of motors connected in series and supplied to each motor. In the final stage of full field operation with two motors in series, each motor receives 750 volts, and the conditions are the same for both F-types and H-types. However, in the preceding step, the series parallel stage, which can be operated continuously without resistors, one side has three motors in series, and the other side has four motors in series. In this case, there is a voltage difference of 500 volts and 375 volts across the motors. Since the current is limited, the voltage difference translates into a difference in possible running speed, making it impossible to match the characteristics of the F-type and H-type in this speed range. Even if the main locomotive climbs without resistors, the helper locomotive would either have to use resistors, or vice versa. As mentioned earlier, both the EF59 and Edge Tow can cooperate in the final parallel stage. However, this requires the speed in this gradient section to always be above 50 km per hour. Even if a 1,200-ton freight train stops on the gradient at a red signal, it can reach about 50 km per hour within 5 minutes of full throttle, keeping the resistor temperature within the allowable range, making operation possible. However, if for any reason the speed must be below 50 km per hour, the main and helper locomotives cannot cooperate without continuously using the resistors, leading to an operational deadlock. When selecting helper locomotives for Sinohachi, a condition was set that they must be capable of running in no-signal operation on this section. No-signal operation allows trains to continue running at low speeds under visual observation if a red signal persists for an extended period or if signal failure causes prolonged stops. The speed limit for this operation was 15 km per hour. To meet the speed, the series stage must be used, but this also brings the same issue mentioned earlier. There are six motors in series for one locomotive and eight for the other. The voltage and motor characteristic issues arise similarly. At this speed, the EF59 could run slightly over current but still operational, while the edge toe would see a significant reduction in current, thus a decrease in tractive effort. Consequently, it couldn't maintain 15 km per hour, dropping to a lower speed, causing a sharp increase in current for the EF59, requiring resistors to protect the motors. Ultimately, there is no speed range where both could cooperate and run stably, making no signal operation impossible. 
Thus, the edge toe never thrived across Sinohachi and gradually stepped back from the front line with the increase of new performance electric locomotives. Born as an eight-motor locomotive, the edge toe was hindered by resistance control, preventing cooperation with other locomotives. The problems faced by DC motors at that time persisted until the advent of thyristor chopper and inverter control technology, 